Fiberco Telecommunications recently kicked off the construction phase of its long-distance fiber optic network, which is set to revolutionize telecommunications in South Africa. The company plans to invest up to 5 billion rand in infrastructure over the next five years, with a vision of ultimately building a fiber network of over 12,000 kilometers. Joining me in studio today to give us some insight into the project is CEO Arif Hussein. Thank okay. you. Now, from a technology perspective, what is the significance of a long-haul fiber project of this scale and magnitude? Okay. Um, it's a very important question. From a technology point of view, if we look at the long-distance transmission links in the country needs to connect um, inland population centers like in Johannesburg, Bloemfontein, etc., to the coast and also to each other, uh, what you see around the world is the most efficient technology in terms of capacity is fiber optic technology. Now, we have some fiber optic technology today. There are various operators that have that. We believe there's a need for a much more um, investment in that part of the network and ultimately it unlocks the, um, the economics and it unlocks the capacity for all operators. So it's a very important part of the technology puzzle. Because that was going to be my next question. When we look at more developed markets such as the Eurozone and the North Americas, they have established fiber network systems in place, but that's still lacking in South Africa, and not to mention on the continent. What is the ultimate plan in regards to connecting South Africa and perhaps even post the borders? Um, okay, so let me give you a statistic. Currently, the African continent constitutes 2% of the world fiber market today. Okay, in terms of what's being rolled out today still. So that really underscores your point that we're actually behind the curve in terms of the other parts of the world that are continuing to invest in this infrastructure. Um, so hopefully what we do is a contribution towards that, but we think a lot more needs to happen. Um, so as you mentioned, our objective is to roll out 12,000 kilometers over the next five years in South Africa and in our borders. We're starting off with Johannesburg, Cape Town and Durban and, and really to interconnect those three cities and all the towns and, and um, smaller urban areas in between, ultimately extending to the borders with Botswana, Zimbabwe, um, Namibia, Mozambique and the like, mm -hmm. and then ultimately extending beyond that as well. So it's a very ambitious plan, but we're very confident about it too. Let's speak about the rollout. When it comes to putting in the infrastructure, who are your partners and are you making use of local talent and labor to put the project in place? Okay. So there are two parts to this. On the one hand, we're a joint venture between CELSI, Convergence Partners, and Internet Solutions. Um, they've been backing us right from the start, and each of those are very strong players in their own right, give us access to a lot of funding and also a lot of resources. On the other side, from a construction point of view, um, we signed a contract last year with ZTE, which is an, a, a very large international telecommunications uh, vendor and uh, a, a company that has constructed many thousands of kilometers of this, of this nature. Now, using them as a, as a partner to us and then leveraging that experience into the local construction industry, um, that's how we're gonna build this network. To give you an example, um, of the investment, we talked about five billion rand, something like 70 to 80% of that is going to be construction and civil works costs. Mm -hmm. Now clearly that's going to be delivered by South African engineering companies and you know we think we have a lot of capacity in this country to do that. If you look at the World Cup, I think we did a great job. So we're going to leverage that capacity. But skills is something we're battling with, especially on the telecommunications and technology side. Will there be that skills transfer from your international partner? And especially when you're looking at the maintenance and upkeep of the network as we go along. Absolutely. Another very important point. Um, one of the big weaknesses we see with networks around the continent is it's one thing to put the infrastructure in place. And as you say, it's another thing to keep it running for, for 20 years with the right service level. Um, our commitment is twofold. On the one hand, uh, working with ZT, we have a very strong commitment both to bring in the best technology in terms of lighting the fiber and the fiber optic cable itself, but also then to transfer that to local teams who have to run that network. That's the one thing. On the other side, in terms of maintaining the fiber, if you imagine 2,000 kilometers of fiber, if it breaks anywhere in the country, we have to go there and fix it immediately, within two hours. So typically what that means is we need to train up people all around the country to be on hand to, to maintain the network. Um, to that extent, we've put a commitment on the table to train up at least 200 um, uh, fiber optic technicians with an internationally accredited standard to help to build the pool of skills that are available in the country today and we think that will go some way towards addressing the needs of our network. Let's look at the South African regulatory environment. To obviously put these infrastructure projects in place you need buy-in for government. 
What has that re relationship been like? And we've seen government push the ICT agenda, calling and asking the private sector to get involved. Mm -hmm. Yes, so, so the timing is very good from that point of view. Um, obviously, this rollout comes at a time when the government is nationwide calling for um, a renewed investment in infrastructure and for all parties to play a role. So this ties in very strongly with that. I would say, though, that you know, putting an investment of this nature down, we wouldn't be able to do that if we weren't very comfortable with the regulatory environment. And to that extent, we've had a lot of very positive support. Uh, I would say, though, that as we go through this process, we still need a lot of interaction with government, and we're looking forward to working closely with them in terms of permitting and construction and those kind of areas. But ultimately, it ties in very well with the national agenda. That's the national agenda, that's government, but what about business? Who are your key anchor tenants for the moment and who are you looking to target to provide infrastructure as a service to? Okay. So the network that we're building is an open access network. What that means is we're able to bring in um, many different customers onto our network and allow them all to have an, a, s a similar level of access to that infrastructure, which is quite a unique proposition. Most operators who have these cables today will sell capacity. We're actually offering infrastructure. Now, so far we've signed up Celsi, Internet Solutions and BT. Okay. All of those are um, very well established operators in this market and the benefit that they get from our infrastructure will come through to their customers. Beyond that, we're also looking to work with government. We think they're a very important um, potential user of this network and any other operator as well. The, the beauty of being open access is really anybody can come on, onto our network and utilize it. Looking ahead uh, and keep, keeping in line with international trends, what we also see down the line is a large enterprise customers. So government is an enterprise, obviously private sector enterprises also will have an increasing need for networks of this nature, whether it be financial institutions, uh, data center operators, media companies like yourselves, all of these types of companies have very high bandwidth usage and we think that usage will increase down the line, which ultimately will make it necessary for them to look at owning their own infrastructure and that's where we come in. So we're very excited about that. That sounds fantastic. Arif, before we go, looking at the immediate future, what is the first, we know the soil has been broken, the, the, the pr project is underway, when can we see the first rollout and when will the first metropoles be connected? Right, so uh, as you say, we started with the construction between Johannesburg and Cape Town. We were in uh, uh, Bloemfontein uh, just the other day. Um, the purpose of that is to get from Joburg to East London and East London to Cape Town. We're looking to start lighting up the first sections of that early next year. Um, with a view to getting to Cape Town somewhere to the third and fourth quarter of next year. It is quite a long process, but we're confident we'll get there. Fantastic. We look forward to monitoring your progress. Thank you very much. Arif thank you very much.